I call Rona Mackay to be followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Today's very important debate is one I wish wasn't happening because the circumstances surrounding it are shocking and upsetting, particularly to the thousands of women whose lives have been devastated by transvaginal mesh implants. This is not or should not be a political issue, as others have said. Long before I was elected, colleagues from across this chamber, particularly former Health Secretary Alex Neil, uh, Neil Finlay, Alison Johnson, John Scott, Jackson Carlow, and others have fought tirelessly to help women affected by this issue. I say it shouldn't be political because the mesh, survi mesh survivors watching this couldn't care less about party politics. They're simply searching for answers, asking why this has happened to them and why a surgical procedure that was supposed to help them has ruined their lives. My former colleague, journalist Marion Scott, who spearheaded this campaign from day one along with mesh survivors, Aileen Holmes and Olive McElroy, didn't get involved with this campaign because it was a good story. Despite displaying the very highest standard of investigative journalism, all too sadly lacking these days. Marion has supported mesh sufferers because their pain and distress is all too visible. Their quest for justice, despite their suffering, was and is relentless. They deserve our full praise and admiration. However, presiding officer, mesh sufferers are not looking for praise. All of Michael Roy and Elaine Holmes do not want TV, TV cameras in their living rooms. They want answers. Before they knew each other, Olive and Elaine were trying to cope with the crippling after effects of surgery they were told would change their lives. Both had been told they were unique. They weren't. We now know thousands of women worldwide have been affected. Mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, grands. The mesh survivors are not campaigning for themselves. They're not doing it for money. They're doing it so that no more women have to suffer as they have lives ruined, families shattered. I vividly remember seeing on TV in 2014 the joy and delight on the faces of the women led by Marion Scott at the committee meeting as a suspension on mesh implants introduced by Alex Neal was announced. However, as I understand it, since then at least 400 women have had a mesh tape implant to treat the very common condition of stress urinary incontinence since the suspension. Incidentally, for anyone who doesn't know what this tape implant looks or feels like, Imagine a bale of newspapers being bound by strong plastic tape, the kind of tape that cuts your finger if you touch it in the wrong way. That's what women are dealing with when it's put inside their bodies. Presiding officer, like everyone else in this chamber, I don't pretend to be a medical expert, but what I do know is that when clinicians can't agree, as we heard in Elaine Smith's powerful members debate on thyroid diagnosis and treatment a couple of weeks ago, it is the patient who suffers. And like the thyroid problem, the vast majority of mesh sufferers are women, and I leave you to draw your own conclusions on that. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government can't ban the use of medical procedures, but it can ask health boards to suspend their use, which is what was done. As a result of this petition, some progress has been made, albeit slowly, such as mesh should not be offered routinely to women, and all patients must have access to clear, understandable advice to help them make an informed choice. All appropriate treatments should be made available, subject to informed choice. A helpline has been established. Reporting of all procedures and adverse effects will be mandatory. A new oversight group, as we've heard, has been set up to ensure the conclusions are implemented. So progress, we are at last heading in the right direction. But it's a UK body, the MHRA, who decides what medical products are safe, and I believe we must complete pressure in the MHRA who, as Jackson Carlow and others have said, they've been total denial over this issue from day one. We should say what more proof do you need that this product is not safe? Here are the victims. Tell health boards this product is not available for use. Of course there are clinical risks with every surgical procedure and side effects to all medicine taken. But when hundreds of women are so severely affected then that risk is surely too great and we must stop doing it. Presiding officer, as a member of the petitions committee, um, I'm well aware of the serious issues that the report of the review and the review into the review throws up. The time doesn't allow me to delve into it and others have, have uh, outlined it uh, very well. Except to say that when those in authority in whatever field stop listening to the people at the centre of the issue, the people they're supposed to protect, it is a disaster. The Scottish Mesh Survivors Hear Our Voice campaign is an outstanding tribute to the courage and determination of the women determined to effect change. Those in power must start hearing their voice, albeit belatedly, 
before more women's lives are destroyed. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Monica Lennon to be followed by Alison Johnson. Please, Miss Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer.